Child sexual assault is more prevalent than one may think. It happens in secret and is widely underreported. The Department of Child, Family, and Adult Services in Sacramento County has a child advocacy center dedicated to investigating these cases. The impact of child sexual abuse and sexual assault is at the root cause of so many social and health issues. Bringing perpetrators to justice while preserving the well-being of victims is the core mission of the SAFE Center. So the SAFE Center is actually the Special Assault Forensic Evaluation Center. We are Sacramento County's accredited child advocacy center. What that means is we have a team of uh, mul multiple agencies and disciplines that come together to really do what we call the best practice and a best approach to a child abuse investigation. This multidisciplinary team, referred to as the MDT, relies on partnerships between members of the DA's office, victims advocates, law enforcement, mental health professionals, child protective services, child abuse medical specialists, and forensic interviewers. Together, they surround the victim and family for the purposes of investigation and healing, each agency has signed a memorandum of understanding committing to this process. Collectively, all of those disciplines make the Safe Center what we are. The process begins with a referral from Sacramento County CPS or law enforcement, but can also come as a request from the district attorney's office or out-of-county agencies. The Safe Center assists children and dependent adults who may be victims of sexual or physical abuse, drug endangered or witnesses to violent crimes including domestic violence or homicide. Rather than talking to a police officer or a detective, uh, we have them talking to someone in a much um, more kid-friendly environment um, that's going to um, allow them to speak freely, to feel safe. The reason we call it the Safe Center is because it is a safe place. The goal is to be able to uh, minimize the times that the child has to talk about an event and uh, the SAFE Center uh, allows, us to, allows us to do that. In an effort to maintain legally defensible and consistent practices, each interviewer provides the family a similar explanation. The child and caregiver will arrive for the forensic interview and get a tour of the SAFE Center, set up with soothing colors, child-friendly characters, and a lovable support dog, Buddy, roaming the halls. They're going to see the room that they'll actually be sitting in. They'll actually see the um, chair that they'll be sitting in. Um, we point out the mirror, and then we have a team of people on the other side of the mirror, so we'll explain who that is and why they're back there, as well as the um, camera that will be on recording that day. Sitting on the other side of the glass are those who need the evidence in the case and those assessing the welfare of the child. For cases that go to trial, detectives are routinely called to testify as to the forensic interview and safe center process. We want to make sure that uh, we get every question we have answered because we don't want to put the child through multiple interviews. Um, the only thing that does is just re-traumatizes them uh, by having to relive um, what they endured you know, over and over again. So we're monitoring the interview, um, we're taking notes, we're making sure that I have my questions answered, the DA has their questions answered, CPS and whoever else may have a vested interest in the case. It allows us to have a more comprehensive picture of the circumstances that the child is going through and helps us um, create a better case plan um, to provide services and meet the child's and family's needs. Since the court sees these interviews as the same as in-person testimony, it's important they be forensically sound. So forensically sound means that we're going to be able to admit it into court and that we're going to be able to uh, defend that the questions were asked in an uh, appropriate way. We want to be sure that we're gathering evidence in a way that um, juries can rely upon. While information is the goal, the child's welfare always comes first. And forensic interviewers are trained to interview children as young as two years old. Given the fact that young children are interviewed, it's important to understand how their age, memory, and influences of trauma may impact the interview. Referring them for a timely forensic interview is essential.
The SAFE Center can and does accommodate both children and adults with developmental disability. Additionally, interpreters are used when needed at no cost to the family. All of my social workers have a master's degree in social work, and then they all have specialized training in forensic interviewing, um, which basically means they've learned how to talk so to children and um, ask non-leading questions, ask questions in a way that are sensitive, child-friendly, and get the most information that we need for the investigation. While the child is being interviewed, the parent or caregiver is shown to a family room where they can be met by a mental health clinician or victim's advocate. And then they have a question about what's going to happen if somebody gets arrested, what's that process like, and that's where the advocates really explain the criminal justice system, um, their, their rights, which are constitutional in California, that's not the case across the country. Um, so we go through the Victim's Bill of Rights with them. Mental health clinicians and victims advocates can also link the parent or caregiver to additional support services for the child, victims compensation, and support for themselves as they try to help their child through the trauma. We started to get extra funding to support parents because we noticed that the parents would leave and they didn't know what to do. They didn't have somebody to vent to because sometimes the perpetrator can be in the family or can be somebody they know. I like to use the metaphor of putting their oxygen mask on themselves first so then they can help the kids out. Um, and that seems to really just kind of hit them and give them that motivation of like, okay, let's do services. Another source for families is just down the hall from the safe center. The Family Justice Center can help when the family needs additional legal intervention. We will share with them some of the services that we have available in terms of case management or crisis intervention, perhaps restraining order, petitions that our legal team can do, um, or just sit down and talk to them while their you know, uh, little one is being interviewed. In some cases, a physical exam is requested, and there is a Safe Center partnership for that too. The Bear Center specializes in physical exams on child sexual and physical assault victims. We don't do evidence collection unless it's within 72 hours. So after that, and even you know, after 24 hours sometimes with, with small children, um, we, the, the yield of evidence collection is, is pretty low. While a physical exam is often part of collecting evidence, children heal very quickly. So there is often no sign of the assault. Bare evidentiary exams are authorized and paid for by law enforcement and Child Protective Services. It's all of us collaborate. So once a month we come together, or twice a month sometimes, and um, go over every single pediatric case that we've done. So every discipline knows what each person is doing. Together, the Safe Center multidisciplinary team surround the child and the family with support linkage to additional services, and seek justice for victims by interviewing them about events that no child should have to endure. It is hard to hear um, some of these stories over and over again, but I see us as a small piece of the puzzle and being able to help to finally get healing and justice for these children.